In CQC update we have three new ships. Two federal ships, assault ship and gunship and imperial eagle, a new upgraded variant of eagle. And I will start with federal assault ship. The price in life build will be around 18 to 19 million. In beta all prices are 10% from life build price. And I also have 10% discount because this is founder's world. So when CQC will go live you could buy a salt ship for around 19 million. It's not cheap but it's not also expensive. So top speed 214, boost 357, maneuverability 6. Which is actually pretty high for such heavy ship. Shields 130, armor 540, hull mass 480. It's actually more than Anaconda has in Clipper, they both have 400 tons. So assault ship is actually heavier. Maximum cargo capacity without shields is 96 tons, so not much. Hard points for utility mounts, also not that great. And two large and two medium hard points. And let's check cockpit right away. Cockpit is actually very tight. And Federal Assault Ship is a two-seater. With nice visibility, not open roof, but you can see above, slightly above you. And on sides, but not directly on sides. Let's try some assault with assault ship. And because ship is so heavy, you can always use it as a weapon itself. And it actually is very effective. 51% remaining, beautiful. So you will spend less ammo. Well, you still will lose shields. I quite liked how one large beam, laser and three gimbaled cannons worked. It will last for quite some time. You just need to pitch slightly up to shoot with all your gimbaled weapons that are located below your ship. Not a big deal. And now there are change to power plants, so if you destroy power plant, not always ship will blow up. There is a chance. While I was shooting I never blew up a ship by blowing its power plant. The explosion sound actually is very similar to Federal Dropship. Well, this is Dropship Mark II, but I still would like to see different sound. I just can't resist to blow up clippers. They are so beautifully when they explode. You see power plant zero, and ship just stops. Because if you have zero power plant, your power output will be halved. Target destroyed. Nice wreckage. And this actually is very funny, I've tried to ram. You can now collect your bounties without even shooting. All you need to do is just ram. And get paid for that. 
Pretty cool. Previously you had to shoot at least once. And another clipper. Running before shooting again. And ship is very agile, as you see. I have no problems to keep myself on enemy. Even on such agile ship as Clipper. But for a soul ship to become useful, Dev should tweak its shield value. Probably not a good idea, because it'll be much too good. And this is strong signal source. Just to try to see what happens. Dangerous Anaconda this company. I tried to find hazardous extraction site, but could not. And again, ramming speed for pips to systems, do not forget that. And ram. <laughs> and enemy has shields down. I really like 480 ton ships. It's heavier than Anaconda, surprisingly. And gunship is even heavier, but not that agile. I will try it tomorrow. As you see, losing shields on assault ship is very easy. You need to keep an eye and trigger happy finger on your shield cell banks. You can survive strong signal source. I had even several shield cell bank charges left on my last shield cell bank. <laughs> but with three internal compartments left for shield cell banks, it's... You can even see now the destruction I caused to this anaconda. There are huge holes in it. Oh, I pressed wrong key. Yeah, I have one charge left. Then I need to switch to another shield cell bank. In this setup I used one class 5 and class 3 and class 4 together. It will keep you safe from NPCs, but not so much from players. You see power plant zero, ship is still intact. Finally it blows up. It seems that damage model actually has improved since last build. Because this anaconda actually had really huge holes in it while I was shooting at it. And eagle also is not a problem at all. Even with fixed weapons. That just shows how agile this ship is. So if you are against NPCs, this is very good ship to try. It has speed, it has firepower. What it lacks really is shields and internal compartments. But I had fun flying with this ship. Let's take a look at outfitting screen for Federal Assault ship. As we know, two large, two medium hard points. I even used two beam lasers, two large beam lasers at the same time. And Assault ship allowed me to shoot for around 7 to 8 seconds. I had best shield boosters. The ship has some power issues, but not that great. You will have to compromise, but you will not be very limited. I also used mirrored surface composite armor. Best class 6 power plant, class 6 thrusters, class 5 frameshift drive. Class 5 life support. Class 6 power distributor. Class 4 sensors. Best shield generator. If you would like to use prismatic shield generator, you will have to compromise more. Probably you would save some of your utility slots and have similar shields to what I have now. But Federal Assault Ship has way too few internal compartments. You can have only like 3 shield cell banks. 3, 4 and 5 class. You can also have class 2 shield cell banks, but they are very weak, so probably with new rules of power plant destruction it will be better to use hull reinforcements there. Assault ship has reasonable armor, but very weak shields. At least compared to other ships like Clipper, Python, Ferdelands, Vulture, even Courier has better shields. And jump range is around 15.2 light years, which is not that bad.
Federal assault ship is not a beautiful ship. Somebody might even call this as ugliest ship in the game. It's also known as Federal Dropship Mark II ship, so they are very similar. The ship actually is very fun to fly. I had a lot of fun against NPCs, I'm not sure how it will handle in PvP. Also I'm not sure it will stay like this, because usually devs rebalance ships. You know, there always is something you can tweak. Anyway, on paper Imperial Clipper is much better ship than Federal Assault Ship. Same firepower, but on Assault Ship you can use fixed weapons, while on Clipper you can't. My fully kitted ship was doing 360 degree turns in 8.4 seconds, with 4 pips to engines. With 0 pips to engines, 10.6 seconds. And just for comparison, Diamondback Scout can do 360 degree turn in 8 seconds, Diamondback Explorer in 10 seconds. So Diamondback Explorer with 4 pips to engines will pitch 360 degree turn, same time as Assault Ship. It's very impressive actually for ship that has 480 ton hull mass. And because of that you can use ship as a weapon itself. And it's very effective. You saw that. So maximum speed for my assault ship was around 240. With boost around 400. Clipper has 340 and 430. Maximum cargo 96 tons. So completely useless for trading. Well not completely but I wouldn't use it. Assault ship requires medium landing pad, so you can trade with outposts. But there are much better ships for that. Jump range for assault ship, fully kitted with mirrored armor and all best modules, was around 15.2 late years. Imperial Clipper jumps 15.4. It has slightly better armor than Imperial Clipper. But shields really are a little bit disappointing, because my ship had 383 shields and Imperial Clipper 551. And Vulture and Ferdlands and Python and Anaconda has better shields. Even Imperial Courier has much better shields than Federal Assault Ship. But it was incredibly agile. I did not expect this from this ship. There were no ships that could manage to stay out of Federal Assault Ship field of view. And if you meet good pilots, you can always fly in reverse. So all in all, I actually liked this ship for PvE a lot. Well, you will run out of shield cell banks mainly because there are only three internal compartments that you can use apart from shields. Only one class 5, one class 4 and one class 3. And as you can imagine, it's just not enough. So I would say that shields are Federal Assault Ship biggest problem. Maybe they will add class 6 compartment and then it actually will solve a lot of problems for the ship. Maybe even make it too good. At least you don't have huge problems with power plant on this ship. I mean, you don't have to compromise that much. You still will have to think how to squeeze the last power out of ship, but it's not such a big deal. Hardpoint placement are good for fixed weapons. One large hardpoint is above ship in center. Other large hardpoint is below ship in center. And medium hardpoints also are below ship. As for weapon loadouts, I used my standard loadout. Beam laser mixed with cannon, fixed beam laser and gimbaled cannons. I used large beam above fixed and three gimbaled cannons below ship. It worked actually very well. And I also tried two large beam lasers and you can shoot like 7-8 seconds with two large beam lasers. Your weapon capacitors allow that. You can try different weapons. And for PvE you probably don't need anything else. You can swap beam lasers for pulse lasers, because large pulse lasers also are a good weapon. Next year with crafting we will be able to tweak our weapons. And will be interesting to see what players will come up with. Just keep in mind to use two separate fire groups for large weapon above your ship and for three weapons below your ship, if you use gimbaled weapons. Weapon position is also good for turret weapons. So it's only up to you what loadout you prefer. You can experiment and have fun. So fly safe, commanders.